Hello everyone, this is Mr. Sovar and welcome to the sixth tutorial for App Game Kit 2.0. And today we're going to go over just a few, just two basic features. Um, one of them was actually asked on uh, the comments for putting a texture on an object. And the other one I decided to do was a function called Open Browser. Open Browser basically just opens up a uh, URL um, on your whatever browser you choose. For example, since I'm using Mac, I'm going to be doing Safari. I did try to do it and uh, I test out the program and everything and it comes off kind of weird. It's like it doesn't know what application to use and you have to choose Safari. In Windows, it's a different story and it just opens up Explorer automatically. So it's kind of interesting how that works, but um, I'm just going to go over the commands very quickly. I assume they've watched the previous video so you understand a lot of these commands. I'm not really for sure I've, if I've gone over set camera look at before. So I'm going to go over that one too. So you have your set window title which sets the title of the application. Set window size which is the actual size of the uh, window. The virtual resolution is the actual resolution within the window. The uh, set orientation allowed is for if you have a mobile device if you turn the phone it would change orientation of the screen, which is like landscape or portrait. Um, we have a global variable for object, which is going to be the object ID number for the object box, which is going to be width, length, and, or wait, width, height, and length, length meaning depth, of 20 units. And of course, loading an image grass.jpg, which is a local variable for the identification number for grass.jpg, which is IMG. We first of all set the camera position 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is X, Y, and Z, and 1 is the camera identification number. We set the object image. Now we do not take a sprite and put it on an object. We take an image and put it on an object. So we have the object identification number, which is OBJ, and then we have the image identification number, which is IMG. And then we have the, um, I believe, I forgot exactly what it's called. The uh, texture stage. This is mainly used for shaders, um, which I am not going into shaders today because I'm kind of busy and I didn't want to put up the code and I didn't have a full understanding of shaders. Shaders is like uh, my hardest subject, so I'm not going to go over it right now. I'm going to go over it when I have a better understanding of it. But if you just set this to zero, it will be the default um, texture level. And I'll show you what happens when I change this. But um, for now, we're just going to keep it like this. So you set the object position so you can see it well. Keep it on the same level for Y as you are, which Y is going upwards. Z is going forward and X is going back and forth and sideways. So you have 100x, 0y, and 100z, and of course the object identification number is obj. Now w is just a local variable, just so when I actually click the actual screen with my mouse, um, it makes it so I don't have duplicate clicks. By doing this, um, I have if get pointer state, which basically means my if I click down or not, one equal if it's equal to one, then I've clicked down. If it's equal to zero, then I've released the button. And W equals zero. Since it's automatically zero, I can just click. It opens up the browser to Google, has a delay of 200 milliseconds, and then it sets W to one. And since you have your clicking position down, or you're clicking on your mouse, uh, you can't go through this again because W is equal to one, not zero. In order to have W equal to zero, you have to release the click button on your mouse, which defaults it to W equals zero. So I also did a thing here on um, some local variables, A, B, and C. Uh, a equals A plus one are just doing A increments of one. Same thing with B. And for C, since we're subtracting by one, is doing decrements by one. So this is for the X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation. As you can see in this uh, command, set object rotation, the object identification number, X angle, Y angle, and Z angle. And of course, we have a print screen frames per second and the sync that updates everything. 
So going back up to here, we have the set camera look at. This basically rotates the camera to look at a specific position, X, Y, and Z. So we have the camera identification number, which is one. We have get object X, which will give us the coordinates of the X or the X coordinates of the object. Of course, with the identification number for the object, which is OBJ. Same thing for the Y and Z, but of course getting the Y coordinates and Z coordinates. And then we have a thing called roll. Basically, I believe this is, um, I'm not really for sure what the roll does. I know that usually a 0.15 is good. I think it's for the movement of the camera as something moves. I'm not totally for sure on that one. I think it's, um, when you have an object moving or a position moving, the camera will follow it. I believe this has an influence on the movement of the camera according to the position. So let's test out this program and see what happens. So as you can see, I took the grasp JPEG and put it on the object and it's positioned on each uh, side of the cube. And since we have two angles going positive, one angle going negative, that's why it kind of shows it kind of flipping around weird. We got the frames per second right there. And if I click, of course, with Macintosh, it's a little bit weird compared to Windows. Windows would automatically have Internet Explorer pop up. But uh, you have to uh, choose application, go through the application, and you have to go down here, all applications, and you have to look for Safari. Double click on Safari, bunch of stuff up here, and it goes to Google. Let me just close that. I probably should have closed one of those tabs, but anyways. So that's basically how this works. And you can do it again, and I just can click cancel. So let me show you what happens when we change the uh, texture stage. Now I'll be kind of surprised if the texture stays the same, but yep. We can see that the texture is gone because it's not the default texture stage. But of course the texture is still assigned to the actual object, but you can use the ability with uh, shader variables when you make your pixel and vertex shaders to uh, align with that um, uh, image assigned to the object to, for example, something like normal mapping or what's another one? All I know, or maybe a light map or something, bump map, stuff like that. You can use those textures for those purposes. So, again, with shaders, it's basically open GL ES, I believe. Uh, I'm not really for sure which version. I think it's like 1.3 or something, something like that. I'm not totally for sure. Again, shaders are not my speciality or stronghold, I would say. So that kind of ends this tutorial. So um, I know it's just a few things, but hopefully that kind of pushed you along with a few things. Um, I'm going to try to do more tutorials soon. I'm a little busy right now doing some projects. Um, thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe my channel. And also share uh, the video if you have any questions, comment on the video, or personal message me. Any ideas, any specific things, just make sure to comment me, tell me, and I'll do it. Uh, thank you for watching. This is Mr. Sovar. See you later.